Hi, I'm Matt from HockeyReviews.ca and this is the CCM ASV Pro. Well, I guess it's a Super Tax ASV Pro, but it's now called Tax on here. It's a weird naming convention that they went with this. But anyways, this is the ASV Pro Hockey Stick Review. So first of all, I wanna apologize for this taking so long. I have a bunch of other sticks we're gonna be reviewing very shortly as well. I had a wrist injury, so I couldn't really do any of the shooting in my basement. So while I was using them for games, I couldn't really do anything past that. So I didn't really like the testing values I could really get out of it and the thoughts I could get out of it. Now my wrist is fine, so I can shoot them. So I'm happy to like shoot them in the basement, get a better feel of them and use them more. So hence why these reviews are now coming out and everything like that. So we're gonna do the review of the ASV Pro, do the grip test with our standardized glove here. We have a bunch of sticks over there we're gonna compare them against and kind of just talk about it. This stick review only happened because of Jess Hockey who sent me this stick so I could do a review on and make content on. So make sure you check them out in the description as well on Instagram, buy stuff from them. They're a great store in Toronto and ship worldwide and they're great to deal with. Sean on there is awesome. Support me by supporting them. Let them know you came for me, be greatly appreciated. Now, before we begin all that and speaking of injuries, Core Tech, which are core shorts and people have heard of these before, they were labeled under Under Armour before, now Bauer sells hockey specific one, but Core themselves sell their own line of pants and supportive clothing and apparel. Basically, this stuff helps you with growing strains, growing pulls, and helps keep your hips tight and everything like that. And speaking of injuries, I kind of pulled a growing playing in the playoffs a few months ago and have had to keep using these Cortec shorts to make sure my growing doesn't get worse. When I don't wear them, I can feel and it hurts kind of to walk the next day with these. Keeps everything nice and tight and keeps everything from stretching out too far and getting injured. So these have been a huge savior for me. Check out the link in the description to their website and use my coupon code that's in there to get a discount and I'll put it on the screen here. It helps support myself and the channel so I can make you content and doing real reviews, but also you get a solid product that I use all the time and basically am needed in order to keep my growing from falling apart. Otherwise, if you want to support the channel without buying anything, check out the links in the description to Patreon and buy me a coffee. Everything through those links always comes back into the channel so I can keep making more content and doing more reviews. All right, so we will talk about a few of the th sticks here and do a comparison of these sticks. These are basically mid kicks, but really they're kind of high kicks except for the FT5 Pro but I'll explain that one. I don't have an AS4 Pro. Uh, a, someone I play against let me take this one because he knew I was doing tests. So I actually ripped open the blade on this and I'm doing a separate video on this. But this one we have for the awesome texture just to show that off. So I don't have an AS4 Pro to compare it directly to. I never bought that one. I have an AS3 Pro, so we'll compare it kind of to that one. But specifically, we'll go against this Novium. While the Ultrasonic isn't really available at retail anymore, unless they're around or you buy it custom, the Ultrasonic. And then the FT5 Pro, because it is kind of a transition stick between low kicks and that mid or high kick. So we'll talk about that. And obviously the old AS3 Pro. So to start it off at the very beginning, the most important part about hockey sticks is obviously the graphics and this stick looks fantastic. And if you haven't noticed by now, I'm being sarcastic with that, that's not a thing. But I like talking about graphics because someone spends a lot of good time because there is a designer who's spending a lot of work and effort making these every single year. And I think does a good job. And the part of it is you have to remember, you're seeing this in motion at like the NHL and you have to kind of figure out really quickly what stick it is. If people like it and don't like it, it makes a big difference and also if it's noticeable. So I think CCM did something pretty interesting with the Tax ASV Pro here and going into that gold route. As you can see before, the other ones were kind of a more highlighter yellow, and you can see the Tax Super Tax AS3 Pro over here, which had that as well. And then the AS4 was a little bit un more understated than that, but this one is going a totally different direction and going the full gold. And if there was a little bit of red here, oh, there is. It's really close to that Lotus Gold from Formula One. If anyone remembers those Formula One cars that design, this reminds me kind of a bit of that, but they're kind of doing this interesting graphic, like the V graphic all through here very geometrical all through it. And it also doubles as a grip, which we'll talk about in the site future. The interesting colors here in the gold and everything, I think looks really nice and it makes it really stand out. There is only really more one gold stick on the market, which is the Wrecker uh, element, but I think that is kind of going away next time. So this is kind of the only family of gold straight up. The Ultrasonic, which is down here, kind of went to gold green at the end, but doesn't really exist anymore. And so this one kind of takes the new like realm of that and is kind of the only one going. And I think this thing looks pretty good. I also love how they use like the negative graphic here so you could see that uh, Sigma text through there. I do love that look and everything else is pretty kind of standard, just kind of a rainbow finish there, but nothing crazy. It is a kind of busy stick when you look at it like this, but really it's not that bad because it is pretty like simple colors and doesn't, nothing really flashes and like 
shines out to you. The other thing though that I do love that CCM does on their sticks is they still have stuff like this where it has that mid kick profile on it, stick your right there. And then they have all these tech details as well. So they have just like the shaft shape, variable geometry, which we'll talk about in a second, the carbon they use and the name and everything. Well, actually they still have a misprint right here. So Nanluo light, which is kind of funny when it's supposed to be nano light, but that was on the Trigger 7 Pro, I think as well. So kind of funny there, but they don't have the weight anymore, which we'll cover weight in a little bit, but I kind of understand because there is a variance in that way. So tech on this thing is really interesting. And in my opinion, the most interesting part on the stick. So it has that Sigma Tech STP, STP, T, P is really tiny right there. Anyways, what that means, it's no longer just a straight square weave pattern. You have, you can see you have a longer piece, just a square and then a longer piece. You have these rectangles. This is supposedly to make it so the crimping or the distance, like the amount of epoxy and stuff used is less because there's less overlapping of squares on here when you have longer pieces. It has been in all CCM sticks this launch cycle. I can't tell you if it works better or not than what they ever other have, but Sigma Tex is a known company for making carbon composites and this is one of their tech pieces. So it's, there's a reason they're using it, right? But obviously I cannot tell you the actual difference there. CCM might have something, Sigma Tex might have something saying it does a 5%, whatever, but that value is totally not noticeable. So it is what it is. The other part about this stick though, and what makes it very interesting to me is the ridiculous shaft geometry. And that's where they said like the variable geometry. And this stick is pretty crazy for that. So you can see this shaft shape here, just kind of slightly normal here, but then it starts to bow outwards. And you can see it right here where it really bows outwards right here. And then it gets slim and it goes back into a normal shaft shape up here. But you can see how it kind of gets bigger, bigger. And it also it gets like rounder. So this section right here is more round and hopefully it kind of comes off here where it's square, square, and then it bows out and it becomes more round. And then it goes back to a normal shaft shape. And down here is, I think, probably the best view of it. You can kind of see how you can actually see that outer shaft wall where normally if it was just a straight wall, you can't really see it like that. But when you go here, you can see that bowing out. So it's not dissimilar to what Bauer has been doing with the ultrasonic and that sonic taper, but kind of actually very different because this was used to kind of achieve a totally different result. And you can really see with the CCM logos there, how the shaft kind of bows out. The whole point behind this shaft shape, according to CCM, and I mentioned when I went to CCM Hockey House in Toronto, I ended up talking to a couple of their engineers and scientists, and this was one of the sticks that really showed off their first piece of like using the human body to design hockey gear, and this was the first kind of stick out of it, and this shape is specifically for that. And the reason being is when you flex a stick downwards, when you're just flexing, it's just going all along this path. So it's just going all along the, the stick itself. But you don't just shoot by flexing. You don't have a straight up down force just like this. It's on an angle because your force is coming from where your hands are and it's not right there. So the idea of this is if you have this rounded shaft shape, it can flex not just on this one plane, but instead can flex along the rounded part and kind of flex like this as well to get the ultimate load in the stick itself. You don't just flex it up and down, it does kind of have that angle to it. So that's the idea of this shaft shape. So we're gonna stick it next to this tax and hopefully this ASB, and hopefully you can kind of see like right there, you can see how that bows out and how much bigger that is. Kind of look on the other side too. And when you put the top of the shaft together, you can really see how thicker it is down here and how that shaft shape is very different compared to what we've seen before. And this is a very interesting stick to me. And I love that this is a thing. I love seeing companies trying to innovate and do different things. And CCM has great reasons behind this. They have their performance lab and they're trying to do these different scientific approaches to make better pro products and hockey sticks. And this is kind of one of the results of it. Whether it works or not, we'll talk in shooting. But I do love how they went down this route and I love how unique this stick is. This is certainly a stick I'm not gonna let go of because of this very unique shape to it and factor to it. And yes, other companies have done some weird shapes and stuff like this in the past, but CCM is hopefully going down this direction more and more and we will hopefully see more of it in the future. And one thing I wanna call out of is because of this weird shaft shape, some people were saying on previous sticks like the Nexus stick that has that five side shaft where they have issues shooting with it with the stick opening up. I have no issues with the grip on this stick. It does get bigger down here, but I don't hold this stick down here for shooting, even like slap shots a little bit, but everything is pretty well done above here. So all the stick hold, like holding for actual shooting is all done kind of above this point up here. 
and it doesn't really affect that much going down here. So I don't really feel any issues. Maybe you're just touching a little bit right here. When shooting, obviously you have to figure out what load point works best for you. But for me, everything feels pretty good and natural there. It doesn't feel like a big issue in terms of like that shaft shape and actually holding onto the stick and shooting the stick itself. And the grip kind of shows that off too, where the grip stops right kind of down there. So it doesn't expect you to go all the way down here. And that's like the max where it is. So grip is always something that's very important to me. And a lot of companies just fail pretty badly at for hockey sticks. And TCM was a company that was doing awful for it for a while. And I'm happy to say they've improved. And this is where I was kind of complaining about the ASV Pro and this whole series. So the FT3 Pro, Trigger 5 Pro had like no textured grip at all. And it was just a grip and the grip kind of, CCM still has grip issues with kind of chipping and stuff like that. That's still a thing. But the grip on here was pretty meh and mediocre. And you see a ton of Pro Stock 6 with textured grips. And I'm happy to say CCM, I'm not gonna say they listen to my feedback, but that my feedback that I gave on these sticks of saying it needs more grip and better grip, why'd you take away the texture, was completely listened to and changed for the better. And we could see that in the Super Tags AS4 Pro, which was a totally gripped and textured shaft. And you can look at that and that is fantastic. That's like full texture all the way through and you can feel it in your hands. While this is a huge improvement, these little texture pieces are almost too, like not enough. They, I wish they were more bumpy. I'm happy they're there. You can feel it when you slide your hand up and down. It feels great, but I wish there was a little bit more, but that's a nitpick because this is a great shaft texture and it was stock on a retail stick, which is a great thing to see. I talked about it on the FT5 Pro review. I've talked about it on the Trigger 7 Pro review and we're going to the ASV Pro now which has this very interesting integrated texture into the actual graphic itself. So I'm not sure if this is applied the same way Warrior is with their graphics where the actual graphic is what gives the texture and you spray over it. Because right here, the T, there is no texture. And then right here next to these gold lines, there is the texture. So you can see that right there. And that is kind of a cool thing. But next here, where these other lines are, there is no texture. So I do, like, it seems like they're almost applying it to the graphic itself because you can see it all the way like down here, all of these lines do have that texture, but the A, S and V don't. And there's no real overlap of like poor application of the texture. So it might just straight up be from the graphic itself. And if that's the case, it's kind of a cool implementation. Warrior did it before, and we might be seeing it on the CCM stuff. And there is no grip on the top of this stick, which is slightly disappointing, but there is a little bit on the bottom and you can see how it lap overlaps just on the bottom edge right here. It doesn't go all the way through the bottom, just on the edges. So it's almost like a corner spiral, but it does have it along all like right here as well. So it's not just on the corners. It stops down here, but it does act where like you're actually holding your stick and flexing the stick and it's all kind of on here. And it feels great sliding your hand up and down. It is fairly textured. I wish maybe it was a little bit more, but this is pretty good. And doing this, you really can feel that texture. And you can definitely feel down here in your fingers and in your palm. There's nothing on the top, so you can't feel that, but you can actually feel it on the bottom as well. So that feels really good with your hand going everywhere. It's giving you exact tactile feedback of where your hand is and when your hand's moving. So nice grip feature on that. Very nice grip, nice change for CCM. They have been moving in the proper direction again and again, so I wanna show that off. But I do have to say and comment on this again for CCM's graphics and kind of grip. It does chip off. Now, obviously you're gonna have chipping on any stick that you use, but CCM is kind of notorious for their grips and their graphics kind of chipping. And same thing here. So quite a few chips and kind of nicks through it. I have no issues in terms of durability so far with this stick. But again, I switch sticks so much that it's hard for me to get a real test on durability. And if you're just shooting like 200 slap shots with a stick, that doesn't really do it either because real games are the slashes, the face-off draws, the puck like board battles and stuff like that. I have no issues with this, but obviously I can't talk about how good the durability on this stick is. But I did want to show off just this, the chipping because it happens on CCM sticks and it continues with this one. This one doesn't seem like it's quite as bad as others, but it's still there. So I wanted to call that out. So now we are going on to the weight of this stick and it's honestly not very impressive, especially when you compare it to what the AS3 Pro was and what previous CCM sticks were but this is kind of getting into the point of what i've been talking about all the time with sticks and where the weight isn't a huge thing it's more of like that swing weight which true totally got right about to talk about but it's all about the balance and feel and everything like that so this stick comes in at 399 grams this mine was where i weighed it that was the full length and then you got to cut off this as well to get it down to that other weights for other companies like warrior and bow well previous bower sticks that were shorter like the ultrasonic was shorter for example the warrior 
Warrior Novium was like 393 without this length to it. They're all pretty close. The balance on the stick is solid and the weight of the stick doesn't feel like it's a heavy stick whatsoever. It feels very light. It doesn't feel like an agent or anything, but you, you, when I use this stick, I never once felt, man, I would have got that puck if I had a lighter stick, which I have felt recently in the past with a couple Sherwoods. This is not the case whatsoever. The stick feels great in my hands. It feels pretty well balanced. I had no real issues on pucks out of the air and stuff like that. But this shaft shape does create an interesting balance piece to it because it does kind of bow out right here. It does affect the balance to it. And when I hold this stick normally, it does feel pretty blade heavy just from a top hand holding onto the stick perspective. But once you put your hand kind of down here, it loses that a lot because a lot of the weight is right here. When your hand's down here, it does become a more balanced feeling stick and you kind of lose that blade heavy feeling on it when you're actually playing with it with two hands on the sticks down here. Now, like I said, this piece right here is the kind of weight heavy part. So when you slide your hand up here, it definitely becomes more blade heavy and you can kind of notice that. And when you slide down, it feels more almost shaft heavy because that weight is back here. So when you're using it though, it's like a very good balance point it, with a little bit tilted towards the blade right here. But again, no issues whatsoever using it when I was playing with it. I never felt hindered by it, but this shaft shape does create that interesting kind of weight thing to it. But at the same time, I will reiterate this where I had issues with the Warrior Novium with their weight kind of being like centered right here. I never had issues with this stick where it felt like the blade was popping up off the ice and having issues with puck control and stuff like that. While the weight is kind of up here, it doesn't make it just so it's like right of a weird balance point where I felt like the blade was kind of popping up. This one felt pretty good all around and have zero issues whatsoever. The playability on it is really solid for that. So I mentioned the balance of the stick is good for knocking pucks out of the air, puck playability and stuff like that. It's also pretty good for stick handling, but because that weight is kind of slightly higher, I do feel it feels a bit more heavy stick handling than compared to trigger or jet speed. I feel more comfortable with those. And even Nexus is a little iffy just because the new one, the, the blade feels a little too light. So it kind of pops up a bit for an old one, like the Geo, which was one of my favorite. I felt that was great. This one feels a little bit less than that. Not quite as good. Just feels a little bit more laggy than compared to hyper light or a trigger or jet speed type stick. The Novium I had issues with, and I still think is one of the weirdest balance sticks on the market right now. So we'll kind of ignore that. And the ultrasonic doesn't really exist much anymore, but I felt that one was pretty fine overall too. First of all, the blade shape, it, it's a P92. It's not a P92M, unfortunately, like this Warrior and Bauer is. The thing about this is this is the jet speed. You can see the heel sizes on this. It is kind of right in the middle. So that Warrior is a thicker blade right here, a heel specifically. The Bauer is pretty thin and is one of the thinnest on the market. And the, the CCM is kind of right in the middle. Now for passing and like control and everything, when we're not talking about the blade, just the stick itself, it is very easy to control passes and to make hard long passes. It's easier to do a really hard pass without it turning into a shot on this stick than it is on say a trigger or a jet speed because that kick point is higher. It makes it just like it doesn't turn into a shot as much. So you can really load into it and it doesn't just fling off and the stick doesn't kind of go crazy on you. It is pretty consistent and it's really easy to make passes and plays and everything like that. I also found receiving pucks with this pretty easy because of that kind of same thing. There is not a lot of flex down here. It's all kind of higher up. So when you receive a hard pass, the stick down here isn't really flexing that much and it's not as big as an issue as making receiving those hard passes and kind of it flexing out on you. So it's solid in that regards. The balance, like I mentioned, was great. So that helped with passing and puck handling as well and I had no issues whatsoever. Onto saucing itself, it is very solid and I've never really had problems with CCM sticks though to begin with. It is not as good as the Bauer to be just blunt and frank and that's kind of, I believe, this slight different blade shape and thinner blade profile. And again, you can get used to this if you keep using a stick over and over and get better and better hands with it. But when comparing all of the sticks I use, the Bauer ones are like very easy to do for this. So I wanna call it out. So when I'm showing this video right now, I'm not just trying to sauce the puck over the pad. That's easy. There's a piece of synthetic ice still behind the pad. So the goal of this is to get it over the pad, but hit that synthetic ice piece. So it's a real kind of looping sauce. It's very hard to do. I'm sure multiple people on the comments can say they can do it every time, whatever. But with the Bauer stick, I can do it. It's not the easiest thing, but it's doable. With the CCM, it's harder. It's still doable, but it's, it's a lot harder than what the Bauer is. And with the Warrior, I never managed to make it happen. And again, this is like, me not trying to point out one stick's worse than the other or a brand's worse than the other. It's just, this is how these 
kind of thinner curves and blades kind of help with saucing and doing different things with the puck and this one specifically getting under a little bit to allow it to kind of float a little bit more than the competition does getting it high like off the top pad is easy on pretty much all these sticks so it's not an issue whatsoever but it is slightly easier with the bower with that thinner uh, blade to it because you can get just under it slightly easier and it just kind of comes off the blade a little bit easier but like i said no issues with shooting with ccm6 or passing with ccm6 because of the blade i know how it performs it's pretty consistent it's been like that for a while and it is like decently thin where some other companies are slightly thicker all right so now we are going to talk about blade feel which is also like puck feel and pinginess which is basically how much like vibrations and how the puck the blade dampens pucks basically it's like this it's how much of the ping you feel and that gets transferred into your hands and for like vibrations and dampening so we have some cut open sticks and i don't know exactly what these sticks are because a bunch of them were pro stocks so i don't have the exact model on them and we just told like oh yeah this is what it was as you can see this is fd4 pro but you don't really know if it was an fd4 pro unless you like got the whole stick code so bear with me for a sec we're gonna do a whole video on this but just as a quick comparison this is an actual AS4 uh, Pro, and this is that one that was broken and given to me. So we cut that open, and you can see what the insides of it look like. So you can see how it has that foam. Every company will do a different kind of blade design on here with materials. This is supposed to be an FT4 Pro, and you can see how it's like a different foam, and it has two pieces of carbon in there versus the one on this one but again it this isn't an exact thing because the carbon can go a certain distance and come back depending on the blade construction of it but it gives you an idea on how there are different pinginesses and blade feel and how it's kind of created with different foam in here as well as different amounts of kind of carbon ribs throughout it so when we talk about the ASV Pro, it is one of the pingiest sticks on the market and the Hyperlite might be the only thing that's kind of comparable directly to it. When we compare it to the AS3 Pro, they felt very similar, but the ASV Pro felt more pingy in this, but I put it down to uh, just the ASV being an older stick and being used so it's a little bit broken down. That foam's kind of break down a bit. And so it just, I think it feels a bit softer just because of that. This feels very, like you feel everything the puck does when you make hard passes, when you receive everything, it transfers right to your hands. It's very pingy. Some people like that. I prefer more damp and feel, but that is what this is for there. The Novium here is honestly a bridge between the FT5 Pro and the AS5 Pro. So the FT5 Pro is a slightly more dampened blade feel than what is on the ASV Pro, it's not by all means dampened. A Nexus is dampened. This is kind of just not as extreme. And the Novium is kind of abridging a gap up there. So the Novium's more pingy and like a stiffer blade feeling than the FT5 Pro. I shouldn't say stiffer, because stiffer is if like the blade opening up, they all feel really consistent with that. It's more just pinginess. So you feel all that coming back and less dampened. This is their Fuel Core Blade Ultra. They said it felt like their old ones would have smaller carbon we, it doesn't feel like that. This is a pretty pingy blade and more so than the FT5 Pro, but less so than the TAC, so it's kind of in between those two there. Oh, again, a total personal preference thing, but I wanna talk about it because for me, if I can choose a stick one or the other, if they shot the same, I'm going with the more dampened one. Even if this puck shoots a little bit worse, I'm still going with that more dampened one because my whole game is passing and like making plays like that and I prefer that more dampened feel than a more pingy feel. So before we jump into the shooting, and you want to support the channel and you need a base layer and a protective kind of supportive base layer that helps protect your growing as well as your hips check out the cortec this is the pro 1.0 pants so this one is not quite as restrictive and this is kind of tight right here in this x pattern you might have seen these as under armor before or bower for the hockey specific ones there's also the core 3.0 which is a lot stiffer as you can see really helps protect my growing and keeping it kind of in place and make sure it doesn't overstretch itself there's a discount code and you click the link in the description, use that discount code to get a discount off, help support myself, as well as get you some pretty awesome base layer pants that really do help with injury prevention and help stabilize your core while playing. Now we are on to the most important part, obviously, of this, and that is shooting. Now, this stick is an interesting departure from the AS3 Pro, and almost, I don't wanna say it's a backward step, but it will, I think, lose some possible customers for it. But at the same time, it fills a pretty big hole in the market of what Bauer and the Supreme 
basically left behind. This stick is not as easy to shoot as the ASV Pro was. The ASV Pro still felt like kind of a mid in terms of slap shot was really powerful, but it was so easy to release everywhere else. You could shoot it off your wrong foot, you could just shoot it and the stick would just fling and fire, but you could tell where the stick was whipping and it still had that mid or to higher kick to it and it really was evident in the slap shot. The ASV Pro still has a cannon of a slap shot. It's probably the best slap shooting stick I have. Maybe the ultrasonic is right up there, but shooting all the other quick release kind of things does come with a slight hesitation, especially compared to the old AS3 Pro, but it is not as bad as the Novium and I think it is better than the ultrasonic as well. So it's kind of like one tier above the other two there. And in my opinion, the best high kick stick that's out there because it's kind of bridging the gap but not quite as much as going to the AS3. Now, I don't know if this kick point change was purely because of the shaft shape and the idea behind this, or if they thought they kind of overcorrected a bit with the AS3 Pro. I'm not sure what the specs for like NHL and Pro users are in terms of who's stuck with an AS3 and an AS4 compared to like an AS2 or AS1. So I don't know if they're kind of st staying with that. You remember McDavid's using a super tax, like an actual super tax. So it's an older generation there for sure. But I'm not sure what the logic and reasoning behind changing this kick point up was a bit, but I think it's a good idea in terms of making a broader range in their offerings in their six, especially because Bowers just bowed out completely. I mentioned before, Warrior seems like they're trying to kind of fill that hole that Bauer left, but this ASV Pro definitely is, I think on another level compared to that Warrior. Shooting's better, weight and balance feels better. It's overall it's just it's it's a, a better call a better stick definitely feels like a newer generation of an ultrasonic where i thought ultrasonic was really good for what it did and it kind of brought people who aren't always a high kick shooter like myself into being able to use it the tax kind of brings that one like a newer generation so it's easier to shoot than the ultrasonic but it's not quite as good as a jet speed type thing or a nexus and now but you're still getting that power you're still getting that slap shot ability and everything like that with this stick now the one thing is like is it worth going to that over an, or like a jet speed and a hybrid kick and it's hard for me to say personally no like the jet speed the ft5 pro like a nexus ish i'm um, the sync ish but like the lx pro and maybe the lx2 pro are all such good like hybrid kicks i know lx is like a low mid but it's like but it kind of feels like it's more like a hybrid the ft5 pro is a great all-around stick and for me i don't feel like it's worth sacrificing that quicker release on the jet speed and the easy to get like off a shot on the jet speed to increase slap shot and like overall shot power by going to the tack i flub more shots with my tacks and kind of screw up the shot because i kind of overthink it because i have to remember like i really have to load that stick to actually get a really good shot off where the jet speed is a lot more just you can just do it and it kind of works so it's a lot better in that sense now i want to point this out i gave this asv pro to a few people i play hockey with specifically when i'm in net and they're really good shooters and they use sherwood team 90s and old tax like as1 era or earlier tax so real mid to high kick sticks or in some, I think we're using old Supremes. And I, I gave them this stick and said, hey, take a couple shots of these, let me know what you think. And all of them instantly came back and were like, I shoot rockets with that, how much is it? And I told them like, okay, I guess that makes sense because it's that expensive. And they didn't go out and buy it, but they were immediately impressed with it. And were very like oh, this thing is awesome i brought the novium out to those same players and none of them were really surprised just like, yeah it's okay it's good like it's fine but with the tax they all asked more about it and they're like yeah this thing's unreal like jesus what is it i think that's a good example showing the difference between these kind of sticks and kind of showing how like the asv pro right now is really the king of high mid kicks this is a very impressive stick it's definitely the best of its class on the market right now the novium is really the only thing that's competing with it and it's it's just simply not that close thing with this stick though is i don't know if people are actually going to convert to it especially pros retail people will do it because they kind of need the newest ones and the kids get the newest ones and the ones that are on the shelf pros have an options of so many old generations they can do whatever they want right i don't know if people are going to move this just like the supreme ultrasonic where pros didn't really take to it and a lot of them are still using the 2s pro or even a 1s or even like the NXGs, people haven't really gone to the ultrasonic. I don't know if people are really going to the ASV Pro. And with that said, I haven't seen anyone in the pros actually using this crazy tapered shaft and everything. I know NHL players and pros are kind of more hesitant a bit to change to new tech. You see a few people using the new stuff and the crazy sticks, but not 
all of them. So I'm curious to see if anyone has seen one of these actually in the wild. So if you have, please leave a comment below. But that's a thing where I'm not sure if this is actually going to take up in the pro scene and pro market type thing. But I'm hoping this design and idea goes forward because I want to see what they can do with it. And I want to see them push stick tech forward and keep kind of going down that science leading development direction. I can easily recommend this stick if you're looking for a high kick slap shotting stick easily. It's the best on the market there is. It's just straight up. But if you're looking for someone with a little bit more of a range of shooting, I think it is a step in the other direction from an AS3 Pro and maybe an AS4. I didn't really shoot with that one where it's more easy to use. If you want something more all around better and not, you don't need this quite as perfect technique. You don't need to load it quite as much. Jet speed is still there for you and is still a phenomenal stick. And that one's probably would be the recommendation for that. But that's not saying this is bad stick. They did a lot of great things here. I love seeing the new texture and stuff like that. And the, but it's just not the easiest thing to do. And it has a very more niche market compared to some other sticks on the market. So thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully it was helpful. If it was helpful, please let CCM know and Instagram or social media, let them know that my reviews were helpful and you bought something of theirs through this. It'd be greatly appreciated. Otherwise, if you want to see me review specific gear, let me know in the comments and leave comments on Instagram and stuff like that. Let me know which gear you want to see me review. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully it was helpful. Remember to subscribe to me on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Links are in the description. Check out Jess Hockey, linked in the description as well, who sent me the stick so I could actually do the review on it. Buy something from them. Let them know you came from me because you appreciate it. Let them know that their support for me supports them as well. Otherwise, if you want to support the channel, check out Patreon and buy me a coffee. Everything through those links always comes back into the channel so I can keep buying more gear and doing real reviews and testing different products. Thank you very much for watching and take it easy. You're watching hockeyreviews.ca.